There's two of you now? What in the world? Ugh, and one of you was painful enough, now there's two of you. Before you watch this video, remember, I didn't clone them. I thought I did, but I didn't. I don't want nothing to do with Magneto. He's caused me enough headaches as is. Enjoy this video by Crimson. Bye. First, let's take a look at the packaging. You can see the X-Men 97 logo here. And here's a silhouette of all the figures from Wave 1 with an inaccurate Magneto of what he looks like in the show. This is not the one on the packaging. And a silhouette of Magneto here on the side. On the back of the box, you can see Magneto right here. And the, and the icons for all the other figures in the Wave. I do appreciate it when they put the other figures in the wave on the back of the box, but a bio would have been nice too, because the other figures didn't have a bio either. But enough of the packaging. Let's see what this looks like out of the package. Here's the figure out of the packaging. Now let's take a look at his accessories. He comes with a angry head sculpt. He also comes with a pair of fists. Just generic. Kind of like a dark purple fist, same as his costume. And for accessories, that's all he comes with. No effects pieces, nothing else. Some effects pieces would have been nice, but... Mm, I guess Hasbro has a thing against Magneto and effects pieces now. Because he used to come with them all the time. And unfortunately, I don't have any of those. So, we just have the head... Then the different head sculpt and the fists. Now let's take a look at the figure. First and foremost, let's take a look at the regular head sculpt, shall we? Again, the 3D face print is perfect and it looks exactly how it does in the show. The paint on mine is, how I say, perfect. The eyes are blue, a nice deep blue. No paint missing on there let's take a look at the uniform you can see on this m there is mild paint chipping right here but nothing too strenuous nothing to drive me crazy and the sleeves if i'm correct i believe these are different arms than what we usually get for the vulcan body because there is no forearm cut off right here forearm piece this is completely molded on here. This is a brand new mold. So I, that is something brand new. This cape is completely different. This is a brand new cape. It's also very, very loose on the figure. And you can see it just plugs right in on the back. If I can get it to plug in. But no, it almost feels like a soft, rubbery, kind of taffy kind of material. Kind of feels like there's a, like a, smooth rough texture to it and you can see the folds on it and you see other than that the rest of the figure is just I think this is burgundy purple plastic I don't think this is painted on there now and then you can see right here this is all brand new I see there's a little bit of just some some lint and dirt and stuff on mine not, uh, anything else on here is what the back looks like, you know, just the same as the front. You can see the M. The costume from this Magneto comes from an X-Men comic. I forgot which issue, but is where he is the leader of the X-Men. And if I'm correct, I believe this suit was designed by everyone's favorite Shadow Cat. Everybody loves her. But it is not a normal Magneto design. You can see that it that the end that's different than what he usually has. And you'll see what his regular is. Of course, everybody knows what his classic costume is. And we'll see that with the comparisons. But you can see he's on a modified Vulcan body. We'll show that with other comparisons. But you can see how they all it all is completely different. The arms are different and everything. But let's see what he looks like with his alternate fist and the alternate head. And here he is with the alternate fists and the alternate head. And you can see, 
the same exact different same exact looking face just sees it has an angry face and then everything's the same you can see the fists are just same color same thing I believe these are smaller than generic Vulcan hands if I do if I am correct of course but no that's pretty much it for the figure um, we'll discuss well first let's, let's talk about this cape this this cape does not stay pegged in like oh my <clears throat> it come it keeps coming undone like Magneto's decision of whether he wants to be good or bad can never tell and then uh, I did notice this there's this little spot right here um, that doesn't really bother me it's kind of weird looking it kind of looks like it's just been plastic kind of melted messed up a little bit but let's get to our articulation shall we His head can rotate all the way around, even with the cape on there. He does have a butterfly joint that can go this far forward and not too far back. And that is on both of his arms. He has double jointed elbows. And they're pinless double jointed elbows. And I do recommend you heat up these elbows before you start playing with them. Or else it might the arm might pop off. Fortunately I did that and I have not had any issues. He has swivel at the bicep. His arm can go this far up. He has an ab crunch that can go this far forward. And this far back. That's pretty good. This is the flexible magneto, better than the other one was. And he does have a waist swivel. So he can walk around like this. Yeah, let's fix that. There we go. That's better. He has a thigh cut. Double jointed pinless knees. I also recommend heating up the knees before messing with this. He does have the boot cut. His leg can go this far out and do almost a perfect split. He kind of looked like this. And his ankle joints can move up and down. And they can pivot. Just like his ideas about humanity. Now let's take a look at some, some comparisons. Here he is with his favorite punching bag, and he likes to throw him around like a rag doll, Wolverine. Here he is with Cardiacna Nightcrawler. And here he is who's, with whose person's job feels like is being threatened as leader of the X-Men, Cyclops. And here he is with Rogue, who he literally steals from Gambit. And here he is with Goblin Queen. I can't wait to see how these two interact with each other in the show. And here he is with his um, old self, you could say. And hey, look, Magneto's taller than himself. That's totally not weird. And here he is with Amazing Fantasy Spider-Man. They have nothing to do with each other at all. Oh, Spider-Man does have a little Daily Bugle has a cameo in uh, the first episode of X-Men 97. So, Spider-Man in the future... And here he is with everyone's favorite, Mr. Sinister. Hey, Magneto! I dig the new threads. Who designed them? Hook me up, man. And here this one is with a head swap. That actually looks really nice. Although, I'm not going to be displaying him, displaying him like that. He's still too short. I'm just going to lock him in a dark corner. And I, oh, never mind. Nope, he decided to give up. He doesn't want to be part of the review anymore. Okay, let's take a look at the other head swap. And then here's whatever this is. I'm not even going to lie, it looks so weird. Also, the head is just a little bit loose. Just, just a little. 
and he's not even he's not even really looking straight he's kind of looking down like he's depressed because that head got put on this body and this body has a better body than the other but magneto this head which was on this body and not the other body and yes that took me one take to do now, as of filming this video, I have already seen the first two episodes of X-Men 97, and having seen those first two episodes makes me love this figure even more. Because Magneto in the second episode, let me just say, wow. That was perfectly executed, and the figure looked exactly like he does in the show. Now, no, this may not be the traditional Magneto costume that we're all used to, but sometimes change is good. You know, just like him being on the good side. And, you know, what bothers me most is that we didn't get this body with the old Magneto from Wave 1. Which I feel like if it was on this body, it would be a much, much better figure. Because having a classic Magneto is essential to every X-Men collection. But I feel like that first one was a very much a letdown. Now, with all that out of the way... I will say, I'm happy that they did include two head sculpts, but some effects pieces would have been nice. I feel like Hasbro has been lacking with the effects pieces, or just accessories in general in these two waves. Although the next figure we'll be taking a look at is Executioner, and let me say, he has the most accessories out of every single figure from both Wave 1 and Wave 2. While I do appreciate the extra head sculpt, so that way you can put it on your old Magneto from Wave 1, Ugh. Ugh. It would have been nice to have some effects pieces, you know, some magnetism or something along those lines. But with all that out of the way, I would recommend this figure. I don't understand why it sits in, as a peg warmer on stores, shelves from Target to Walmart. I've seen this figure just sit there. I would recommend this figure to anybody. This figure will run you about $25. So, it's for $25 for just that all that, meh, may not be worth it. But, I mean, unless you wait for this figure to go on sale. Well, then in that case, if it goes on sale, then go snag it while you can. But, I do happily enjoy this figure. Is it from my favorite from the wave? No. Is it my least favorite? No. It's somewhere in the middle. But, as always, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share the content with everybody you know. Share it with everybody. Get it out there. My cash app is down in the description below if you'd like to help out the channel. And as always, folks, have a good one. Crimson out.